we uh, we've we've looked at several books in the in this chapter, and uh, as I stated earlier on, as we begin to study the book of of Acts, that it's uh, it's action packed. It's a lot of excitement going on. If you're if you're like me and like uh, action packed movies, uh, you'll continue to uh, enjoy um, this. A particular book again, a lot of acts, and to, t tonight we have uh, we have chapter five in front of us, and uh, chapter five uh, is broken down in actually four major areas that we can break it down. The the the, the first area that we can look at from uh, from verses one through eleven. It is a, a story of Ananias and Sapphira. So real good, real good teaching, real, real good teaching we will find from uh, this story of this husband and his, and his wife. And so the story of Ananias and Sapphira. And then we, uh, uh, from, from, from verses 12 through 16, we continue to see the, the New Testament church as it continued to, as it continued to grow as it continue to grow and, 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 and move forward. And uh, then we uh, uh, become acquainted with the, uh, the apostle who is uh, the apostles when they are sent to, sent to prison from 17 through, uh, through 32. And then it closes out with uh, a, uh, a statement by one of the greatest biblical teachers of the law uh, by the name of Gamal, who taught a lot of uh, Christians the law. In fact, the, uh, the Apostle Paul himself set up under the teachings of Gamal. And I'm not sure if our time this evening is going to uh, afford us an opportunity to get all the way through this chapter. I think we'll be good if we can get halfway through it as we want to take our time and deal with it verse by verse and uh, open up for some discussion. So our um, scripture reading uh, began right at chapter chapter five. I'm going to see if I can get some of uh, the folks here at the table to uh, read. Uh, again, we want to look at chapter one. Uh, chapter 5, verses 1 through 11, 1 through 11. And Hannah, if you have it, I want you to just speak loud, and I may stop you a few times, so uh, don't lose your space. Okay, take it from the top. Now a man named Ananias, together with his wife, Sapphira, also sold a piece of property. Okay, just just real, real, real quickly, I'll stop you right there. For those of you that uh, were not with us last week, um, the, the, the church began to grow and, and develop. And there were some people in the church that were, uh, were financially well off and there are people in the church that had very little, but they agreed, they came up with a plan and those that had plenty began to sell their properties. Uh, and make their make their properties uh, sell their properties, and turn over all of the proceeds to the church, so the church could continue to grow and develop. And the church was taking, you know, the proceeds from the the money to help the poor, to help the needy, and do these these things. In the in the Bible times, the church was really the the, the welfare system, if we want to call it that, for lack of a word, lack of a better word, the church was a place where people came uh, that did not have, and the church would take care of their needs. In fact, uh, many of our educational institutions that we know of today, they actually stem and would develop from a church. So the church was not only like a social system where you got different services, but it was an educational system as as well. So we uh, 
it's important to bring that up because as the church began to grow and develop and, the, and, uh, and need more resources, it was the people of God that, uh, that stepped forward and made various things available, various financial things available to the church. And so I, I just give you that background information because it, it, it is going to make a great deal of sense as we read through uh, this particular passage. Okay, so we got we got Anani Ananias and uh, and Sapphira, and what did they do, Hannah? What e exactly did they do? With his wife's full knowledge, he kept back part of the money for okay. himself. Okay, just just read that one verse again, so we can see what they did in that first verse. Just read it, and we'll see what they did. Now, a man named Ananias, together with his wife Sapphira also sold a piece of property. Okay, they because sold, what did they do? They sold a piece of property, okay? If you look look uh, further up in uh, in the scripture, you'll see that believers in the, in the that came together with one heart and mind, they sold their possessions and they brought the proceeds and laid the proceeds at the feet of the apostles. We, we learned that last week. Now, Ananias and Sapphira, they sold property. Look at verse 2. With his wife's full knowledge, he kept back part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Now, be, before we go any further, uh, did he do something wrong? He kept some money for himself. Okay, he kept some money for himself. Uh, I guess there is absolutely nothing wrong with keeping money for yourself mm -hmm. if that's what was agreed upon. But we're going to learn later on that that was not what they had agreed to do. Okay, go on. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land? Now, my, my question to each of you is that how did Peter know? How did Peter know? Can anyone give me some thoughts on how, you, how did Peter know? How did Peter know this? How did Peter know this? Come on, someone speak up. How did Peter know this? The Lord told him. The Lord told him? I mean, that's a... a I like that one. Any any other suggestions? Or he knew Holy him. Spirit revealed it to him. Okay, the Holy Spirit. Okay, I like that's a that's a that's another good one. Uh, you think there were some snitches back then? <laughs> you, you you think there were some snitches? Someone heard and uh, ran a tip. Well, the. The scripture really doesn't uh, tell us, but however, when we see what uh, actually happens after this, I would have to agree with uh, those of you that went in the direction that the Holy Spirit put it in the, uh, in the spirit of the apostle as to what was happening. Okay, go ahead and continue reading. Continue reading. Okay. Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You've not lied just to human beings, but to God. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died, and great fear seized all who heard what had happened. Then some young men came forward, wrapped up his body, and carried him out and buried him. About three Hours later, his wife okay. We're gonna, we're gonna we're gonna start right there because if we we jump into the the the, the wide part, uh, I think we're gonna miss something. So, one of the greatest challenges that we all have, and that's how we utilize money, and um, and I think that uh, you all as uh, members of the church you know that your you know your pastor is not one that is constantly begging and pleading and saying give 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 
um, in order to keep the church going, obviously uh, a statement uh, has to be made as it relates to that. I've been, you know, been privileged over the years to not be a salary pastor. I'm what is called a bivocational pastor, meaning uh, I work full time uh, to take care of my family and I also pastor the church, but I am a volunteer like the rest of the church and, and give. But the challenge many of us have, and I say many of us have, is that God really wants to bless us greater than he's ever blessed us before. The challenge is that God can't trust us with the, with the little that we have. So if we are granted with more, uh, we'll do damage to ourselves. So here in this case, you have uh, this particular couple that obviously had surplus property and decided that they would sell their surplus property and that they would donate the proceeds to the church. That's what they decided to do. And they made that commitment to the man of God, to the apostle represent who is God's representative. The, the, the problem here is that it is not that uh, it was not their money, it's what they agreed to do, see? It's what they agreed to do. That's where the problem kicks in. They, they agreed to sell their property and turn over the proceeds, all of the proceeds to the church. Now, when Ananias went before the man of God, he represented as if it was everything and it was not. Now, let me say this before we move on, that every penny we have Really, it's something that God has blessed us with. Everything you have, the Bible says the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and what? And all they that dwell in it. So why you may see pictures of presidents on currency, okay? While you may work 40 hours a week, but when everything is said and done, it all belongs to God. I'm going to be uh, doing a funeral in a few days of a colleague of mine that passed away from the COVID-19 uh, virus. And, um, and just sitting and talking and, and going over uh, some of the things with the uh, family, I learned that he's left a great deal of funds to the family, for the family. But one thing about him leaving is that the resources that he accumulated is not something that he can take with him. It's something for the family to divvy up or to fight over, what have you. But, but, but finances is not something that we can take with us, but, but more surely it comes from the Lord. You know, when people become unemployed and, and their income dries up, most of them begin to call on the name of the Lord. And so we have to be mindful of that as well, that everything we have is what God has entrusted us with it. And so if God has entrusted us with certain things and God speaks to our heart, and encourages us to give, it behoove us to give. Because God says to us, he says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running all over. You can never, you can never outgive God. You can never outgive God. And so oftentimes when we bring our tithes and our offerings, sometimes we are left with very little. But I want to serve witness tonight that I have oftentimes been left with very little, 
But for some reason, money and resources kind of come to me in ways that I've never envisioned, ways that I never could imagine. And that's how God takes care of his people. So I want to uh, believe that that Ananias sort of figured out he needed a backup plan. Say, well, you know, I'm, I'm following this apostle and we're, uh, and, and they got all of these great plans, they got this great vision, but what if it doesn't work? If it doesn't work, then I have nothing else to fall back on. So I'm gonna put some aside. And it, it is quite clear that he didn't make that decision. It was just not him making that decision. Let's, let's read on. We're going to see that it was not him making that decision solely. Continue on, Hannah. About three hours later, his wife came in. Not How long? Three hours later. You, you, you mean uh, Ananias didn't have a chance to go and speak to his wife and tell her, let's change the plan? He didn't have a chance to do that. Why? Why he didn't have a chance to do that? He, died. he he was dead okay not only dead but buried mm -hmm. okay this this the same apostle uh had had the ability to heal and deliver and raise the dead and everything else but he chose not to do that at this time he instructed the people to go ahead and 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 bury him now let, let's take a, another look at his wife. Let's look at his wife. You think, you know, so often you get a husband and a wife, you think one of them would do something different. One of them would actually do something different. Let's see if she would do something different. Read on. About three hours later, his wife came in not knowing what had happened. Peter asked her, tell me, is this the price you and Ananias got for the land? Yes, she said, that is the price. Peter said to her, how could you conspire to test the spirit of the Lord? Listen, the feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out also. At that moment, she fell down at his feet and died. Then the young men came in and finding her dead, carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Great fear seized the whole church and all who heard about these events. Yeah. Now, now there, there are many messages in uh, this particular uh, um, passage of scriptures here that we've read. Many messages uh, in it. One is that it's a, it's a dangerous thing to lie uh, to the spirit of God. You know, uh, it, you know it. You know, it, it, is, it is one thing to, to lie to men, but it's quite another thing to lie to the, 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 the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God. Lie to God that have given you what you have. And that's, in, in essence, what they did. Now, it appeared, just based on where we find them in Scripture, that they were believers. It appeared that they were believers. But some way, somehow, they got caught up into their wealth. And we have to be extremely careful to be caught up, be caught up so deeply in our, in our wealth that we lose focus, uh, lose focus completely. You would think that, um, that if it was the husband's idea to chill out and, um, and try to trick the apostle, you would think that the wife would have said, honey, uh, we're not going to do that. But the scripture says that, that they agreed. They, uh, they agreed to lie to the Holy Spirit of God. And as a, as a result, their life was snatched away from them immediately. You think perhaps even in our era today that there are many that have you know, died abruptly for just lying to the Holy, Holy Spirit of God, all because of, you know, all because of money. Uh, the, 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 the Bible says that the, uh, uh, the love of money is the, uh, the root of all evil. 
And you know, we're not we're not careful. You know, we all need financial resources uh, to live. And even in the Bible time, they there are currency, there are financial resources that folks used to live by, live off of. But we still have to get to the point of understanding that God is the one that provides. And when we're at our, uh, when we're at a rock bottom, it's God that brings us up. So when we're doing very well, we need to praise God and exalt God. When we're not doing as well, we need to praise and exalt God. He is our refuge. He is our strength. The Bible says he's a very present help in time of need. So we have to be very careful uh, and not get so caught up, not get so caught up in the in our financial resources. So when God speaks to our heart, when God speaks to our heart, we can do what God desires for us to do. You know, we all should want God to be able to say, I can trust him with a million dollars. I can trust her with a million dollars. I wonder this evening, how many would just uh, with a, a show of hands and say Lord, the, that the Lord can trust me with a million dollars? <laughs> can he trust you with a million dollars? You know, you know the, if, if God granted me a million dollars today, the first thing comes to my mind is I'm going to tithe off of it. I'm going to give God 10%. I've been trained. I've been trained like that over the years, people of God. Because I know in order for the 90% to be protected, that I need to put God first. See, I need to put God first. You know, when God blesses us, when God blesses you with something, the first thing you want to do is that you want to make a statement to yourself to say, well, God, I'm going to plant my seed in you first so that the 90% can be blessed. Many Many of us have resources that we have not uh, we've, we, we've not put God first at it, and so our resources have not been blessed. And see, when God blesses it, He takes it and, and is able to it multiplies because the Scripture says that when we give it, it's going to be given back to us. Good measures pressed down, shaken together, and running all over. So anyway, we, we we're left with a, a lesson about giving to the Lord, giving to the Lord. We have to always establish that what we have belongs to the Lord. You know, whatever we have, you're not going to be able to take it with you. You know, I, I heard the story of this man that, uh, that was lending a lot of money out to people. And, uh, and this guy, uh, uh, this guy showed up at his funeral and he writes him a check and he puts the check in the casket as they were about to bury him. And he says, well, this is what I owe you. Here it is. There is only one problem with that, that, that once we leave here, uh, that money no longer has any, any value to us at all. We, we can't take it. We can't take it with us, but the best thing we can do is put God first and foremost with our financial, uh, um, with, our, with, with all of the finances that he blesses us with. Any, any, any thoughts or comments before we move on? Just want to get some feedback from you all. Just join in, join in, anyone. Any thoughts, Hannah? What, what comes to your mind? Any thoughts? Give me some thoughts. Just speak up, speak up. Any thoughts, any questions? I, I just think that Anais did, you know, exactly what any of us probably would do. And uh, because we do that all the time now, you know, we get paid and um, we just um, use it for everything else. And, you know, then we just whatever left mm -hmm. and if we just give it to the Lord. You know, and um, that's not even, you know, tithing, but it's always at the end of the line, you know, when it comes to our finances. Yeah. Yeah, always a, that, that's always uh, a, a problem when, when we uh, 
put God last. Anyone else? Anyone else? Just just some thoughts on what we've read thus far. Anyone else? Just some thoughts. Questions, questions, questions. Anyone intrigued by uh, the story? Go ahead. It shows you like you got to speak up, son. It shows you like what greed can do to people. What greed can do? Okay. What happened after is that like they got struck down? Yeah. And they got buried together. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 Greed is a greed is a very very powerful, very powerful spirit, very po powerful spirit. And it need to be, need to be broken, need to be broken mm -hmm. in, in our lives. Okay. Uh, anyone else just go right ahead and comment. Just, just, said, just go, go right ahead and comment, please. Said giving back to the Lord is key and we should, and we should not forget about him. Make sure he's our first priority because he's blessing us. Just give it to us. Amen. Putting putting God putting God first. Very good. Anyone else? Come on, let me hear from uh, some of the folks on the line here. Just go ahead and speak up. Anyone else? Okay. Okay. Hearing, hearing, hearing none. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna move, we're gonna move on again. Uh, for those of you just uh, tuning in, good to see uh, Pastor Robinson on with us this evening. Uh, we're gonna go on to uh, verse, verse twelve, verse twelve. Jared, get ready to read verse twelve, please. Uh, we're gonna go on to uh, verse twelve. Um, and now we go into another another section uh, in the life of the apostles. Uh, how we see many, many are many actually heal. Go go right ahead, Jer. Verse twelve. The apostles performed many signs and wonders among the people, and all the believers used to meet together in Solomon's colonnade. No one else dared join them, even though they were highly regarded by the people. Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. As a result, people brought the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and mats, so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed by. Crowds gathered also from the towns around Jerusalem bringing their sick and those tormented by impure heart, impure spirits, and all of them are healed. Yeah, now, the, 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 the part of this, uh, this reading here that just really stands out is the scripture says that all of them were healed. And, um, and you know, many, many question, does God, really heal anymore or do we just you know take treatment and over a period of time we we get better but i want to submit to you that the scripture teaches healing the, the scripture teaches deliverance the scripture teaches signs and wonders and signs and wonders are still uh, uh, being manifest every day I always like to, to to say when I'm I'm teaching on signs and wonders, is that the signs and wonders are actually taking place. Uh, many of us have seen signs and wonders even this very day, but we call them other things, and so we don't give God credit. You know, if you were somewhere today and you almost injured yourself, or a car almost hit you, or you uh, uh, you almost didn't get through or whatever. It is easy for us to say, you know, oh, that was a coincident. Coincidence, raw, just the, the just the the term alone used by a child of God. You rob God of His miracles, of His signs, of His wonders. When you use words like, oh, I was lucky, you know, when I hear. Uh, 
when I hear people use the word lucky, you know, I often feel in my spirit that I need to correct them. No, we're not lucky. We're blessed people of God. And so if a miracle happened and you say you're lucky, then what you're saying is that God didn't do it. So we take away the, the miracles, the signs and the wonders that happen every day. We take them away from God. And then we'll sit in the Bible study and we'll say, where are the miracles, the signs and the wonders? And God is like, I've been showing them to you every single day. I, I, I guarantee you that every single one of us on this line will, if you sensitize yourself to the miracles of God, the signs of God, that you will see them this week. If you sensitize yourself to the miracles and, and the signs of God, you will see it for yourself when you become more sensitive to that, uh, to, to signs and wonders. Because the scripture says that signs and wonders will follow those who believe. And so as, as, as Peter and the apostles begin to uh, move around and, and do different things, that people just with the, the presence of God and the power of God all by itself uh, allow people to be drawn to them. You know, the, the Holy Spirit of God is like a magnet. Uh, the Holy Spirit doesn't cause people to run from us. Actually, the Holy Spirit is a drawer. It brings people to us. The, the anointing that God places on us is very powerful people of God, very powerful. And you can see what was happening here with these apostles. You can see the miracles that they begin to perform just navigating. The, the power of God was so strong that when they passed places, just a shadow of the apostles would cause people to be healed. One thing we find very unique about these apostles is that everything that they saw Jesus do, now we are beginning to see them do the same very thing, the same very thing. Every one of us that are believers have the ability to pray for the sick and see them healed. How many, how many of you believe this evening that you have the power to see someone and pray over someone and see them healed? I wonder, can I at least get a, a amen or something? <laughs> amen. Yeah, can I get an amen? I can't hear no one. <laughs> can I get an amen. amen from somebody? Amen. All righty. Thank amen. you, my brother. I needed that. <laughs> amen. Okay. Give me a thumbs up or, or, or something. But you can pray. You can pray. And they can be healed. The, the, one of the great beauties of being a pastor is that I get the privilege to pray for people more often than the average person. And, and so I've seen God heal. I've seen God deliver. I've, and, and, and I must say to you, I have been, I have prayed over folks because I know it is my responsibility and I know I have to adhere to the scriptures. I have prayed for folks and when, when, when the doctor talks about the prognosis of the person, that based on what the doctor was saying is like, it doesn't appear like this situation is going anywhere. But still, I took God at his word. No, not my words. I took God at his word and I prayed. And I prayed. And miraculously, healing came to individuals on deathbeds. It, it was is the word of God. All I needed to do was throw my face, my faith, at the word of at the at the word of God. Uh, I have I prayed over my mother in the hospital, 
and the doctors keep coming back and saying, we can't find anything. We can't find anything. <laughs> day three, we can't find anything. Day four, we can't find anything. And finally, it occurred to me that maybe I ought to tell the doctor that I'm a praying man. I believe in the power of God. So at the week, at the week expired, they let her out of the hospital where they couldn't find anything and they made up something, I guess, just so they can get some payments in from the insurance company. So we need to believe in the power and the, the, the healing power of the Lord. So the apostles performed many signs and wonders among the people and all the believers used to meet together in Solomon's car. So it became an attraction. It became an attraction. It, it, it draw people unto the Lord. Again, want to open up the mics again to get some comments, get some comments uh, from some of you on, on, on healing and, and deliverance. And perhaps some of you have prayed for individuals and God miraculously healed them. Just, uh, just unmute your mic and, and uh, give us a couple of comments. Any of you? Amen. Well, I know that I have prayed over myself and um, I felt the healing of the Lord um, because many times if I'm in any pain or anything like that, um, I would, you know, declare healing for myself and it works. Amen. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Anyone else? Go right ahead. So, um, uh, my pastor, um, in James, it talks about if any of you are sick, um, to call on the elders of the church to pray over them, anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up, and that's uh, very significant that um, <clears throat> when we are sick or maybe going through whatever that we um that we you know we pray not only at your local church but any person that you know that may be a christian um we we always should um ask for prayer i think that's the most effective um tool that we have as christians but it's always appropriate to um call on the the leaders and the, the prayer warriors to to uh, ask for some type of prayer, knowing that it's the Lord's will that will raise us out of a bed of affliction or whatever we may be going through. Amen. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Anyone else? Anyone else that we hadn't heard from this evening? Go right ahead. Amen. It's some good stuff. It's some good stuff. Anyone else? Okay. Well, say, um, Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll say like the power of the tongue is of the tongue is strong and like whatever you ask, you shall receive it. Like that's what I just feel like. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, the the this the, 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 the scripture tells us that uh, that there you know there is there is power in the uh, in the in the spoken word. Uh, you uh, you know life you know life and death is in the power of the tongue of the tongue of the tongue so you know there there are times that you need to speak healing over yourself you know you need to speak deliverance over yourself you know you need to speak blessings over yourself you need to speak uh, words of encouragement over yourself you know sometimes we uh we look to individuals and and you know when those individuals may not be there the question is what are we you know what are we going to do if they're not if if the, the, those individuals are not there so we need to be uh very keen on on god's word and uh and and uh and dwelling on his word and meditating on his word so that so that others so that others can uh be healed and and delivered and we as well the the, the bible tells us that even David himself 
that David was jammed into a situation during, during uh, coming home from war with his, uh, with his soldier uh, boys. And when they got there, they discovered that the enemy had raided the camp and had taken their wives and their children and all of their possessions. So David, very own men, turned on him and wanted to actually kill him because they were, they were following him. So the scripture tells us that David got so discouraged. There is no one else that David could turn to. So the scripture says he went and he encouraged himself in the Lord. That's what he did. He went and encouraged himself in the Lord. And so sometimes uh, we need to do just that as well. So we are... We're going to, we're not going to uh, jump into this next area because it is very, very lengthy, but it, it deals with the, uh, the uh, uh, persecution of the people of God and how the people of God uh, would be persecuted as a result of doing, doing, doing a work of God. And I want to spend a little more time on that. Don't want to rush, don't want to rush uh, through that. So we're going to, uh, open up the mics one final time to get a uh, summation, some final comments uh, from each one of you. And then we will uh, close out our time in prayer. We just got about 10 more minutes to make all of that happen. So anyone that got some final comments some final thoughts on, uh, again, we looked at the story of Ananias and Sapphira, and we looked at the uh, passage uh, concerning the, the healing the healing of the uh, of the people of the of the people of God by the uh, by the apostles. So, any final any final thoughts? Go right ahead, please. Just open up your mic. Go ahead and open up your mic. Any final thoughts? Any final thoughts? Amen. Like brother, brother, brother Omar, good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Any any final thoughts before we, we before we close out uh, this evening? Well, I was going to say um, the wife, you know, um, Sapphira. She um, she didn't know what happened, but when she was confronted, she knew that her husband had died. But when she was confronted, she you know remain you know in the light as well and it's just to let us know that you know um just because we see our loved one you know do something wrong that doesn't mean we have to condone in it and you know continue with the lies as well because you know if you if you are a christian yourself you know you don't have to follow along with what you know that's not right you know, whether it's your husband, your children, or whoever it is, you know, you have to know what, you know, you have to do right by God, you know, because if not, you can, you know, be cursed as well. Mm -hmm. And she was cursed because she, you know, followed in his footstep. Yes. Yeah. Again, very, very important for us to just be reminded that um, whatever we have belong to the belong to the Lord and God can bless us and God can do great things for us. But there are some things God does not tolerate and he did not tolerate what uh, this husband and wife had agreed to, had agreed to do. Any, any final thoughts, uh, uh, brother, brother Spalling, you're there, you're with us this evening. Brother Omar. Okay. Again, so good to, Coast, so good to see uh, TJ with us this evening. God bless you, my dear brother. So good to see Sister Nicole and uh, Brother Bobby, Sister uh, Gibson, and Sister Hannah. <laughs> and I'm looking for Jared. I can't find him. He's uh, right here. But he's right staring, staring me in the face. <laughs> and uh, Pastor Eric and uh, Sister Christine. We we're gonna uh gonna close out uh gonna close out in, in prayer sister nancy was with us earlier uh but had to had to sign off 
But we're going to close out in prayer again. It's been good to share with you. Again, I want you to read uh, uh, this, this latter uh, part here uh, for next week, uh, beginning at verse 17. We're going to going to uh, go ahead uh, next week and just focus on uh, how, you know, how the people of God are persecuted uh, and uh, some of the things that we will learn uh, next week is some of the things that are actually still happening in our society today. There are places around the world where we can't talk about Jesus and proclaim Jesus and have Bible studies such as this and, and meet and fellowship. You know, if you do those kind of things, you'll lose your you'll lose your life. So we just want to be grateful and, and and thankful for all of that. So we're gonna uh, prepare to gonna gonna prepare to close out in prayer. And uh, and and so we'll we'll do just that. Uh, so we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have Pastor Eric if he would uh, consider uh, closing us out in prayer, uh, and uh, we'll uh, we'll say good evening uh, to you all after that. Uh, uh, Brother Eric, go right ahead, please. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, most gracious Lord, we come to you today, Father God, just saying thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for waking us and starting us on our way, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for allowing us to make it home safely, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, for this service that we had today. Father God, we want you to be with us, Father God, throughout the night, Father God. And Father God, we pray, Father God, for those they may be in some type of turmoil, Father God. Whether it be sickness, Father God, whether it be financial, Father God, whether it be depression, anxiety, Father God. We just ask you right now, Father God, to see about each and every individual, Father God. Father God, we ask for your Shekinah glory to just fall on this earth, Father God. You know what we're dealing with today, Father God. You know what we've been dealing with throughout this year. Father God, we ask you, Father God, to drive the COVID virus, Father God, all sickness and diseases, Father God, AIDS, cancers, diabetes, Father God. Oh, Lord, we know that you sit high and you look low, Father God. You know everything that's going on. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, we ask you to fix it, Lord. Fix it like only you can fix it, Father God. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, we... Look to the hills with coming by help and all our help coming from the Lord. So, Father God, we're not demanding anything of you, Father God, but we're asking you if you're to let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Father God. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts, forgive our debtors. And lead us not into our own understanding, but lead us into righteousness, Father God, because we know that you are the kingdom and the power and the glory, Father God. Oh, Father God, we're just asking you, Father God. If there's anyone on this line right now, Father God, that's in need of anything, Father God, Father God, grant it to him, Father God. But we ask you, Father God, that not only we be selfish, Father, only to ask, Father God, but we also need to be givers, Father God. Father God, we must understand that we're not given unto the church, but we're given unto the Lord, Father God. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, a closed hand cannot get filled, Father God. So, Father God, if it can't meet a need, then it must be a seed. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, teach us, Father God, how to use our seeds, which is money, Father God, to not only prosper, Father God, financially, Father God, but in our health, in our marriages, in every area of our life. Oh, Father God, we're just asking you, Father God, to just bless the Way Fellowship Church, Father God, in our leadership, Pastor Baker. Uh, First Lady, Father God, and his family, Father God. Father God, if there's any of us that's, um, that's sick, Father God, we ask you, Father God, to see about them right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you all day long, Father God, and we ask you as we leave this line, but never leave your sight, Father God, that you look after us, Father God, and when we wake up in the morning, Father God, we say thank you, thank you, thank you. For that, Father God, we just give you all on and all the glory. It's in Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. 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 Just, just a couple of uh, uh, closing items. We are, uh, we have rolled out this campaign uh, this month that we are looking for 100 individuals that would give us a 30 second uh, video clip uh, citing their favorite Bible verse. And we want to sweep this all across uh, the country. 
uh, if you can uh, help us in that effort, we are uh, we're putting together the the first round. We have about close to about twenty on there. If you haven't already sent in your thirty second video clip citing your favorite Bible verse, we want to encourage you send it in send it in this this evening. If you got some other friends that you can encourage them to join us. Again, our goal is by the end of August. We want a thousand, not a thousand, 100, <laughs> 100 individuals that would just video themselves stating their Bible verse. For example, my favorite Bible verse is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So that's all you need to do. And then you... You send it in to us. We're gonna uh, we'll load it in with all of the others, and we want this thing to go viral. So we're gonna we're hoping to release uh, the first part of it uh, this week. And if you can take it and share it with others and get them to send in uh, their 30 second clip or their Bible verse, and we believe by the end of this month that we will use the Word of God to encourage so many, so many, so many others. Because if if you send it to someone and you tell them you're listed there, they're, they're going to have to go through listening to all of those Bible verses until they get to you. That's how powerful it, it will be. So we need everyone's help, need everyone's help. Again, we only, the goal is 100, but we want to make sure that 30 seconds, not, not longer than that. And uh, we're looking forward to just having a great time listening to uh, the scriptures, the word of God. God bless you all. Thank you all so much for tuning in this evening. Have a blessed evening.